I'm going to show you how one could model a red pepper cell using the dynamic cell model kit. All you need is a red pepper. You can just peel away a little bit of the skin from the red pepper and just put the skin on a slide with some water to make a wet mound. Once you've done that, you would have something like what I have on the microscope here. And on this screen you're looking at um, a live image of what we're viewing on the microscope with a whole bunch of different red pepper cells. Very thick cell wall because it's from the peel. And this particular red pepper cell is the one that I thought would be fun to model. So I took a photograph of it and that's shown on the other side of the monitor. And we're going to use this particular red pepper cell to model with the dynamic cell model kit. Now let's model the red pepper cell that we saw in the microscope. We're going to need to have the cell wall and the cell membrane and we will um, then act like the cytoskeleton and bend this cell into the shape that's reminiscent of the red pepper, we, red pepper cell that we saw in the microscope. Something like this. At this point it's time to start putting in whatever we saw inside the cell. Now the main item of interest that we saw were our chromoplasts. The chromoplasts are the colored, or in this case red, plastids, which give the red color to the red pepper. And there were a whole bunch of them in our cell. So we'll take all of the ones that you've been provided with in the kit and put them into our cell in approximately the areas where we found them or where we saw them when we were looking in the microscope. There was a whole string up the side. There was another on the other side. And the cell that we saw, we happened to also see the nucleus in here. I don't know if you noticed it, just a little bit of contrast, but we didn't stain for it, and it's hard to see. <clears throat> Finally, um, when your students are modeling this cell, they might end up having other discussions that you might not have expected. For example, often I have found that my students have noticed that the cell wall in the red pepper cells is much thicker because we took it from the peel, the harder part of the red pepper. They often want to try to model a thicker cell wall. Now I haven't given you varying sizes and thicknesses of cell walls, but sometimes students will take a second cell wall and try to string it around the outside just to reflect the fact that this had a thicker cell wall. And I find that to be a very exciting part of watching students use the dynamic cell models.